If you build web pages, you probably know HTML5 is the newest version of HTML and it is the way the web world is moving. It adds great new features to websites, many of which were previously only available by using external plugins like Flash or Java, but this will make them part of the regular web, standardized across all platforms, across all devices. Now, we're big fans of HTML5 here at lynda.com, but if you haven't done much with it yet, it's often a little confusing to approach, particularly because HTML5 is talked about along with other technologies like CSS3 and JavaScript. And these aren't part of HTML5, but they do typically come along for the ride. And that is an important distinction. HTML5 is not changing this arrangement. It's still HTML5 for your markup, CSS3 for your presentation, and JavaScript for your behavior. Now, if you remember our discussion of ECMAScript earlier in the course, and that what we're doing in this course is ECMAScript 3, you might think, well, does HTML5 mean I must have ECMAScript 5? Well, unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. And here's really the first problem with the picture. HTML5 is not finished yet. The specification is still a work in progress. But that does not mean you should be holding off thinking, well, I'll wait and see if it gets implemented. HTML5 is happening. We know what's going to be in it. There are pieces of it already implemented in the latest browsers, and there are things we can be doing right now to work with it. So what are these main features? HTML5 brings new tags, new elements, new abilities, and the main areas are better support for video and audio, built into HTML itself so we don't have to use Flash plugins, for example. There's a new element called Canvas that will allow us to draw on the screen directly. There's offline storage support. So websites can actually store a significant amount of data, meaning they can be used without a connection. There's a whole lot of new form elements for building better forms. There's drag and drop support, built-in abilities to drag and drop items, not only within your own pages, but actually between websites. There's geolocation understanding of latitude and longitude built into the language and local storage, being able to store more data than just simple cookies. And there are new JavaScript APIs. And what that means is it kind of makes sense that there will be new objects and methods in JavaScript if we want to write code that works with these features. But here's an important thing. These features are being implemented into new browsers piece by piece, not as one thing. Firefox 4 has core support for all the main HTML5 features, but if you had to support Firefox 3, you'd lose most of them. Similarly, Internet Explorer 9 has support for just about everything, but if you have to go back to Internet Explorer 8, you're going to lose quite a lot of this. And it's the same story with the other browsers. Now, if you haven't come across this site before, this is caniuse.com, and it allows you to break down the features of HTML5 and CSS3 that are available in the different browsers, some of which have very good support, but as you get further on, you'll find certain ones missing, and then a general scorecard for how well the different browsers are doing for each of those features. But we're really focused on JavaScript here. And while this course, as we've mentioned, concentrates on the core of ECMAScript 3, there are a couple of new things that you should know about that are coming along with HTML5. In addition to the regular get element by ID and get elements by tag name that we know about, we now have the much requested get elements by class name, which returns all elements that match that class. And you can even tell it to find multiple classes separated by spaces. Most libraries like jQuery and Prototype have implemented their own version of this for years, but it's great to have it finally natively supported in the language. But this is really the only general purpose new method that I would associate with HTML5. And it's not available in Internet Explorer 8 and before. So if you need that functionality in earlier browsers, look at using jQuery or another library. Because most of the new JavaScript abilities in the most recent browsers are just support for those new HTML5 features in those browsers. Here's an example of that. So in HTML5, there's a new video tag in the markup. And while this does work quite well on its own, if you grab the video element object using, say, get element by ID, you can then call methods of it, like dot play and dot pause, and set properties of it, like the current time, and do that all through JavaScript. And the object also has events. 
so we can choose to listen out for, say, the ended event. Now, you might recognize that here I'm using the add event listener format for working with events. This is the one that I talked about earlier in the course that I was avoiding because of cross browser differences. But here I can pretty much assume that if I have a browser that supports the video tag, it certainly supports the add event listener method. And there are other events such as play and pause that we can react to. Now, for more information about video, take a look at our course HTML5 Video and Audio in Depth. Similarly, HTML5 brings a lot of storage options along with it that we can target in JavaScript from simple local storage where you just pick a name and start storing and retrieving simple values, all the way to full offline support, allowing your site to be used as an application without even requiring current network connection. And then there's WebSQL and something called IndexedDB, really adding substantial local storage abilities to the web. And if you're interested in more about this, check out our course on HTML5 local storage and offline applications in depth. Now, HTML5 does have a new JavaScript feature called Web Workers. We'll be able to load JavaScript and make it run in the background, regardless of what else is going on in your page. This is something that most other languages can do, usually under the term multi-threading, but JavaScript has never been able to do. You can create a new worker object and point it to a separate file of JavaScript. Now, the worker object can't directly affect the DOM, so you have to allow it to generate events and send them back, reacting to a message event from the worker the same way you might react to a click event from the user. And from your page, you can send messages to kick off certain functions in the worker itself. Now, web workers aren't supported in Internet Explorer yet, but are available in Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and Opera. And while there's obviously more to it, you can tell that HTML5 is bringing some interesting stuff that's going to impact us as JavaScript developers. So the question is, what if you want to use these features? Well, you can't just ask, does this particular browser support HTML5? That's the wrong question, because as you've seen, HTML5 is really not one thing. It's a collection of features and abilities all wrapped up and given this name HTML5. And your responsibility as a JavaScript developer is to be aware of the new features that HTML5 brings, figure out if they meet a need for you, and then write any code to deal with that particular feature and perhaps to deal with that feature not existing in an older browser. So, if you want to be an early adopter with HTML5, you will be interested in cross-browser differences. Now, if you wrote any JavaScript more than a few years ago, the idea of detecting differences between browsers might seem like a throwback to the bad old days of trying to detect whether the user was on Netscape or IE4. This is not the same thing here that we're talking about. We are not remotely interested in browser detection, but we are interested in feature detection. Big difference. You do not want to be worried about writing code to detect whether the user has Chrome version 12.1 on a Mac or Firefox 3 on a PC, but we might want to ask, does the current browser support the new video functionality in HTML5? If so, I'll use it. If not, I'll do something else. It's the specific features we care about. Feature detection in JavaScript is quite simple. You treat the feature as an object and ask if it exists. Well, how? Well, here I'm writing a little bit of code to ask if the new get elements by class name method exists in the current browser. And the way that I just do it is just name it inside an if statement. If it exists, this will be regarded as true. Now, very important, notice that here I'm not calling the get elements by class name. I'm not using the opening and closing parentheses and passing any parameters. I'm just using the name of it inside our if condition. And you can do this with any of the future facing objects. First, check if it exists, and if it does, use it. If it doesn't, ignore it or fall back to some backwards compatible way. For example, if HTML5 video doesn't exist, we can generate some elements to include a flash player. And next up, what I'm going to cover is a very simple way to detect all the HTML5 features that might or might not be available in a browser.